Joining us now is attorney Ben Megrian with Heading Strategies to talk more about this case. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. All right, Ben, you were a prosecutor with Suffolk County for 10 years, and we watched this arraignment together this morning as the assistant DA laid out that new evidence, including those Google searches. We just heard the DNA evidence. How strong of a case do you think prosecutors have here? I think prosecutors have a very strong case of circumstantial evidence that the defendant uh, committed the crimes alleged. Uh, we have all kinds of video evidence of the defendant attempting to dispose a body and all of those horrific Google searches that we heard about are all going to provide a jury with uh, a link in the chain of events uh, that they can find circumstantial evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, so the government has a lot of evidence to work with. Um, they're going to continue their investigation, presumably in a grand jury, to develop more information. Um, but I think that based upon the physical evidence, including a knife and blood that we found at the house, uh, or we heard was found at the house, and other evidence that they found in the dumpsters that have uh, Anna's DNA and blood on it, um, this is a case that, that the government can prove beyond a reasonable doubt, even without a body. Okay, and that was, I wanted to ask about this, the type of strategy could the defense use here, considering all of this circumstantial evidence and no body has been found? It's a great question. Um, all of, almost all of the evidence that we've heard about so far relates to the, the uh, disposition of the body. We still don't know, nor do we have any evidence about what happened between the hours of, say, 1.30 and 5 o'clock. 1.30 when the last witness was at this house for the party, 5 o'clock approximately when the Google searches began. Um, so the defense are going to try to focus their attention on the unknown in that period of time. They may try to explore the possibility that somebody else committed the crime or that the death was not a murder um, and that uh, perhaps Mr. Walsh was disposing of the body uh, out of some panic or fear because he was somebody who was on federal release. If there was something illegal going on that could have provided him a justification for trying to get out of trouble, um, you know, he may try to rely on something like that. Now, among the Google searches laid out in court, we heard Sarah Kanji mention the search on divorce, also a search after Anna went missing about uh, inheriting. So could any of those searches show premeditation? And now does that change the strategy for either the prosecution or even the defense? The prosecution is going to want to show uh, deliberate premeditation. Uh, the information about divorce is useful for them to show that there was some type of problem in the marriage that was going on before this murder. Um, the inheritance was certainly um, the search about how long does a, a body have to be gone in order for the inheritance to kick in was cer certainly a search that I uh, paid close attention to, um, which would show uh, some type of financial motive uh, for the defendant to commit these crimes. So this is something that uh, the government's going to want to be establishing a motive uh, every place that they can find it um, and tell a, co he, you know, a coherent uh, and easy to understand story for the jury to understand about why somebody would want to do this. A lot to watch. Ben Magri and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And as